All right, let's pick up where we left off here on step six, uh, changing wall height. This is pretty important, and it begins to show you some of the power in Revit. Uh, when creating walls in Revit, the wall height will automatically default to 20 feet. Uh, the wall height can be modified to a desired height using any one of the several methods below. Uh, method one is interesting, and we're going to actually do that one second. Let's take a look at method two first. Um, if we're in an elevation view, north, south, east, or west, we can select the wall, and we're going to get a blue arrowhead that will allow us to drag that wall into place. We can actually also do it in 3D. So if I click on this wall, I can grab that blue arrowhead and drag this down. Now what's interesting is I can pick a height and leave it there. And I can come over to my properties and see how tall that wall is. It has an unconnected height of 9 foot 3 inches and 19 256. Well, that's a decimal place or a fraction that we're never going to really be able to use. So I don't find it to be really all that accurate to drag walls to a height. What we're better off doing, let's undo that. Let's take a look at our uh, south elevation. And we can see that wall right now is 20 feet tall. If I click on it one time, it tells me the wall has an unconnected height of 20 feet. Well, if we set up proper elevation markers, we're much better off telling the wall to stop at an elevation than anything else. Because then if I change this elevation later to 9 feet, the walls will follow the elevation marker. So the second option would be to give it an unconnected height, hit 8, enter, and now it's uh, apply, it's an 8-foot wall. But if I change my elevation marker, that doesn't matter, the wall will still say 8 feet, it's permanently 8 feet. A lot of times what I like to do is, instead of that, Put it back to 20. Give it a second. Mm -hmm. All right. Is I want to say that this wall should be have a top constraint. We're saying its base constraint is the floor. It has to start at the floor level of zero zero. Well, I want its top constraint. Instead of being unconnected, I'm gonna hit the down arrow, and I want to take it to the roof level. Hit apply, and now it's at the roof level. If I change my roof level to 10 feet. The wall goes up with it. Let's take a look at this in 3D. Oh, I did the back wall actually. Let's spin this around and look at it. Alright, so I click on this wall. We know the wall is going is 10 feet tall, going up to level roof. Okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my Sorry, south elevation, roof level, back to 8. And the wall is going to follow it down. Alright, let's go back to 3D. So there's that wall at 8 feet. Now I can click on this wall one time, hold the control key, and click the rest of the walls. That's called control pick. Now, they all say 20 feet and they're unconnected. I want to connect all of them to roof. Apply, and they drop down. So now, hit escape, and I've got the walls of my shed are all 8 feet tall. And if I'm not sure, I can click on it once. It tells me up to level roof, 8 feet. So everything's correct. All right. So my advice is always to connect your walls to a elevation mark. Let's take a look at what's next here. We got through step one and two, adding floors. Open the floor level plan. If we're going to create a floor, we want to create it on the floor level. That's why we made it there. It's at zero, zero. Let's zoom in a little bit and check out our size. Everything looks good. Back to the tutorial. Under the home tab, select floor. This places you into sketch mode. So when we go into sketch mode, you're going to see a green tab show up here. We're going to go to floor. And now we have the modify create floor boundary. There's ways to create boundaries. We can pick lines off for a model. We can also draw that. In this case, let's see what, the, what it tells us to do here. Uh, we can select each wall of the building. Uh, then you can use uh, double blue arrows to toggle between interior faces and exterior faces. You want your wall to be under the floor or over the floor. Or under the wall or inside the wall, sorry. Um, in this case, we are going to draw a rectangle using the rectangle tool well let's try the boundary one first we click on this wall and here's what they were talking about 
toggling. You want your floor inside your wall or outside your wall? We want it outside. A faster way to do this, hit the X there, discard that floor, come back, do floor again, rectangle tool, and I'm going to lock on the outermost corner, and drag across diagonally, and lock on that corner. Now my floor is outside of my walls. Green check mark checks it. It's blue, so I can hit escape and get back to my normal view. I'm going to go to 3D and see what happens. All right, looks pretty good. We've got a floor under our walls to the exterior surfaces. Let's check that out in the south elevation. All right, perfect. You're walking on 0, 0, and your floor is below there. Go back to 3D, click on the floor once, and get some information about it. Right now we have a floor generic 12 inch. Well, we don't really make things generic, it doesn't really help our model. Let's see what they want us to do. So in the properties palette, which is where I was just at, click on the edit type button um, and choose the floor type as wood joist 10 inch uh, wood finish. That means you have a wood joist floor with a wood finish that you'd walk on. So let's take a look at that. It's blue, it's been selected, edit type. I'm going to change this here to wood joist 10 inch wood finish. Hit OK. Now that's changed it. You'll notice some more lines up in there. That's beginning to give us some detail of what that looks like. Let's tip it open a little bit more so we can see down inside there. We can see our wood floor. Let's change our detail level from medium to fine. Let's change our display graphics to consistent colors. So now you see we've got gray walls and there's your wood floor. Kind of cool. For wall we're drawing, we can go back to hidden or wireframe. doesn't really matter, but we'll keep this on fine. All right, let's see what it says. <clears throat> uh, click the green check mark in the ribbon to exit sketch mode. We should already be out of that. We are. There's no green ribbon, so we're solid. We're in, we're in place. Step eight, creating a gable roof. All right, so under the floor plans in your project browser, select uh, roof level. Note the floors and walls are visible but are shown in half tone since they occur below the roof elevation. So what does that mean? Well, I'm going to go back here to roof. And notice these are kind of grayed out. They're giving us geometry to work with, but they don't really exist at the roof level. They stop before the roof level. Okay, so that's... Uh, under the Home tab, select Roof. Notice the Roof options appear in the Options bar and the Define Slope box is checked. The Define Slope checkbox identifies roof edges that will slope up to a peak. Okay, We need to create a roof boundary by sketching the edges, but an easier method follows. In the Options bar, enter one foot in the overhang input field to create a one foot overhang on all sides. Select two opposite walls of the building. Notice when you select a wall, you may use the double blue arrows to toggle between an offset inside or outside the building. Be sure your roof edge is outside. Uncheck the Define Slope box and choose the two remaining walls. A roof, the roof will not slope up from those two average edges. So what does that mean? Let's try this here. We are going to do a roof. We are going to define slope. Overhang 1. Enter. All right, and notice the blue line goes in and out. We want that blue line outside the house. I click there, and I click there. Now I'm going to turn off the fine slope and click here and there. That pink roof line only has two triangles, one there and one there. Those roof edges are sloped. These are vertical, and it is a one-foot boundary all the way around. Let's see what it says to do once we've done that. All right, let's see. Those are the two sloping triangles I talked about. All right. Let's go ahead to the properties palette, and we're going to pick a wood rafter 8-inch asphalt shingle insulated roof. What does that mean? Well, here we go. These are our roofs. We are doing a wood rafter 8-inch shingle insulated. Click on that. And we pretty much have it. Let's check mark this. Let's double check to make sure that's what I was doing. Click on the green arrow on the ribbon. 
Answer yes to the prompt, would you like to attach highlighted walls to the roof? We want to make sure our walls and roof get attached. And we'll check it in 3D. Green check mark. And escape. We should have it there. Let's check our 3D version. All right. Now we have a roof on our shed. Here's the problem. Our walls did not attach. So let's see how that's done. Nothing's actually touching. You have a little point right there. Well, that's not correct. We'll go back to my home view. I'm going to click on that wall. So it's blue. Hit Control. Click on that one. And just do those two for now. I'm going to attach top to base. Click on that button. What are we going to attach it to? Click on the roof. Hit Escape. And now look at it. It's solid. Look at the other side. And it's still open. So let's take a look at attaching those two as well. This is a good view of that. Click one wall. Inside wall. Attach. Roof. Did I miss one? There we go. It escaped. Now everything is attached and we have a solid object, a solid box. Alright, go back to home. Alright. So we are on step 9 next, modifying the wall type, and that will be the next video.